Hmm, looks pretty standard. Ubuntu desktop, right? Wait, what's this at the bottom? Is that Word on Linux? Windows on Linux? Word on Windows on Linux? What is this witchcraft? So what's happening here? Well, we're running a virtual machine. We're running a full virtual machine with Windows 7 installed. And uh, this particular video is uh, on Ubuntu Unity, but this could just as easily be uh, Ubuntu GNOME or OpenSUSE or pretty much anything under the sun. Uh, depending on whatever your distribution is, there will probably be a package for VirtualBox, and there will probably be a package for a Unity Scope VirtualBox. Now, VirtualBox is just some software that makes virtualization easier. There's more software than just VirtualBox, and arguably, there's better software than VirtualBox. VirtualBox is pretty easy. Um, Oracle, a big company that makes databases, among other things, and is owned by Larry Ellison, now owns VirtualBox, which makes me slightly uneasy. But I'll <laughs> I'll refrain from the political commentary, but that'll sort of bite us in the butt a little bit later. And we'll talk about that. Now, the first step for making sure that you can do virtualization is making sure that your CPU has virtualization extensions. Pretty much every CPU of the last five years does. And that it's also enabled in, in your BIOS or your UEFI. Because by default, most manufacturers disable that. Um, you can uh, poke around the BIOS, look for Intel virtualization, uh, VTX or VTD. Now those are technically different technologies, but some biases call them the wrong thing, which is sort of a sad panda. I get it. <laughs> I get that maybe something is lost in translation. Um, it, most of the time it should be labeled uh, Intel virtualization, uh, VMX or VX extensions or VT-X. Um, there's another extension called VTD, more, most properly, that is an extension that lets um, virtual box or any other virtual uh, machine software uh, interface directly with a piece of hardware. And so this is kind of cool because if you've got a second graphics card or something like that, you can pass through the second graphics card to the virtual machine. And as far as the virtual machine knows, that physical piece of hardware is directly attached to its virtual self. So the virtual machine running can have physical hardware. And so it's really, that's, I mean, that's total matrix country right there. Uh, uh, but it's really cool, but not a lot of processors. Well, uh, more processors support that, but a lot of the K parts uh, don't support that. But the higher end K parts do, and some of the more recent uh, K parts do. So it's a total crapshoot if you've got a K part, whether or not the VTX is going to be supported. But by and large, virtualization is supported on pretty much everything under the sun. Uh, Celeron and uh, some of those, you know... Um, uh, the Pentiums, most of the recent Pentiums do actually support virtualization, not the VTD, but uh, the virtualization stuff. So look for the virtualization options in your BIOS or your UEFI and make sure those are enabled. Um, you can apt-get install um, CPU checker, or uh, I'm not sure what the packages are on, on other distributions. It's CPU checker on Debian and Ubuntu. Um, I've already got it. And you can, then you can do KVM-OK. And KVM-OK will sort of give you some hints as to whether or not you uh, you have that enabled. So if you're if you're already you know in Ubuntu and you don't want to reboot or you're in your your Linux distribution, you can try to run KVM-OK and see if KVM-OK reports any problems with your virtualization setup. If there are any problems, chances are you can go into your your UEFI and turn on virtualization. And you'll be all set. So do that first, and then we can continue with the installation. VirtualBox is a really easy way that lets you run virtual machines on whatever computer you want. And so unlike Wine, um, which is a system of running Windows programs on Linux um, sort of natively, you're actually running the entire Windows uh, platform, the whole thing, uh, in, a, um, in a virtual machine. And this basically lets you do anything that you could do on Windows, except for things that need direct access to the hardware. And so if you're running the Adobe Suite, you're playing a game, um, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, programs like that, typically those programs will want direct access to like your video hardware, your video card. And because this is a virtual machine, you can't really do that. Uh, you can pass through, if you have a second video card, you can pass through that second video card hardware to the virtual machine. And so when the virtual machine boots up, it's like, oh, there's a video card here. Let me, let me just, you know, connect and use that and, uh, you know, uh, load the drivers for that. And that all works natively. The bad thing about that is that this sort of Windows in Linux, this this is called seamless in the context of VirtualBox, um, is not really possible um, with that type of an approach. Um, I, I've seen a few really weird edge cases where somebody's doing something like this through a remote desktop, 
and it still kind of works, but you don't really, <laughs> the programs are not really designed to take advantage of the uh, hardware acceleration. On the AMD platform, eventually, uh, I would say that uh, pass through 3D acceleration won't really be a big deal because OpenCL is basically built to do that. It's just that no one has done that yet. There are a few people working on it, and so it could be that any day now we'll have OpenCL virtualization. Um, it's I think Citrix Zen server uh, does it in the server farm, but you have to have one of the like uh, K1 grid cards or something like that, and it's just it's a mess. And so don't just forget I even said that. <clears throat> Uh, this is a convenient way if you have old line of business or legacy applications that don't otherwise require hardware acceleration to run on a virtual machine under Linux basically seamlessly. So, I mean, you can see I've got, I've got the, the Ubuntu Unity uh, desktop environment, but I've also got the start menu at the bottom. Now, you don't have to run it seamlessly. You can run Windows you know, in a window and have your start menu in a window, or you can move it to its own monitor or however you want to do that. But I kind of like to run it seamlessly for the legacy applications uh, that I have to deal with that, that basically <laughs> won't work uh, anywhere else. Um, think, programs like Adobe Acrobat will run fine. They actually run really well uh, under virtualization. It's a document assembly program. It's just um, programs like After Effects and Adobe Premiere that really take advantage of hardware acceleration don't really run that well. Photoshop runs okay. Um, recent versions of the Creative Cloud for Photoshop take better advantage of uh, acceleration with your video card, and so those don't work as well. But, uh, you know, CS3, CS4, CS5 runs pretty well under VirtualBox. CS5.5 runs pretty well. CS6, you're getting into uh, hardware acceleration territory. It will complain. Um, all the recent versions complain. It's basically okay as long as you're not working on multi-hundred megabyte uh, Photoshop files. Um, but for things like video production and, and that kind of thing, you really want hardware. Um, you can do hardware pass-through, but that's outside the scope of this video, so we're not really going to talk about that. So how do you get started? You know, what do you do? It's like, all right, I see the magic. I see you running Windows under Linux, and basically everything's okay, and you can run Windows programs side-by-side -side with, with Linux programs. Um, Mac people may be familiar with this already. It's called uh, Coherence on Parallels. Uh, one of the the virtualization platforms for Mac, so it's it's kind of like that. Except ah, there's no commercial software, except for VirtualBox is a little bit commercial, so we'll just pretend. Um, once you've got VirtualBox installed, basically you just go run the uh, run the VirtualBox VirtualBox manager, and then you just hit new uh, and create a new virtual machine. You just call it test. And you'll tell it the operating system that you want to use, Windows 7 64 bit. Um, and you're, you're going to want to give it more than 512 megs of RAM. I gave it 6 gigs of RAM. Uh, this thing has 16 gigabytes of RAM. I could have given it 8. Windows wants to use a lot of memory. Honestly, Windows wants to use more memory than Linux. So give Windows as much memory as you can. It also depends on what you're going to run. If you're just going to run, like, some really ancient program that just is crap, uh, you don't really need to give Windows that much RAM. But if you're going to run something like, you know, Acrobat or Photoshop, you're going to want to give it as much RAM as you possibly can. Uh, we can go ahead and create a virtual hard drive file. This basically creates a file on the file system on Linux that acts like the hard drive for the virtual machine. And so everything that is that machine is in that one file, and it ends up being, you know, 25 gigs by default, but you can, you can size it, you can use a different size. Now, dynamically allocated or fixed size. Dynamically allocated means that you'll create a file, and you, if you say 25 gigs, that file can grow up to 25 gigs, but it won't actually take 25 gigs from the get-go. Like, it won't consume 25 gigs on your Linux partition immediately. It can grow that large, but it won't grow that large until something inside the virtual machine actually allocates that space. Or you can do fixed size, where it just goes ahead and makes a 25 gigabyte file right now on your Linux machine. Not necessarily 25 gigs, whatever size you specified, but that's how that works. You can also pass through physical devices. So, like, if you have a mechanical hard drive and you're just like, well, that, that whole hard drive can be Windows, you can tell VirtualBox to just give Windows the whole hard drive, and then it'll show up like as if the hard drive was attached to the real physical machine, even though it's a virtual machine. So you get some options. Uh, for, the, for our purposes, this is fine. Dynamically allocated is fine. We'll just call it test, and you know, here's the sizing thing, 25 gig. That's fine. And so we just do create, and then this thing is you know, ready to hit power on almost. We need to edit it and go to storage and tell it, that we want to, uh, you, if you have a, a live, like a uh, Windows installer CD, 
you can use this live CD checkbox, but most of the time you're going to be installing from an ISO. And so you would browse and pick the ISO that you want to install from. So once you do that and you hit OK, basically this thing boots up off of the, uh, the installer CD, just like it was, you know, you'd put it in a raw machine and you go through the Windows installation process. Then once Windows is installed, um, you would actually uh, go to the menu, the, the VirtualBox menu, and you would go down to an option that lets you insert the um, guest services uh, drivers. And so basically that, in, that inserts a CD-ROM uh, in the virtual machine CD-ROM that contains an installer that you install drivers that make the integration with VirtualBox a little more seamless. So that's like your mouse drivers, your video drivers, um, some other stuff under the hood. Um, one of the options there is uh, direct 3D acceleration. I'm going to recommend that you don't really install that because it's very finicky. If you want to install that, you can restart your Windows virtual machine in safe mode and install it, and it'll enable Arrow and some other cool things like that. But uh, depending on what your host machine's graphics drivers are and the version and the video card and a whole bunch of other variables, it may not work or the screen may you know, flicker and be weird. So keep that in mind. So once you get everything set up, uh, you're gonna get these sort of pop-up messages from VirtualBox that is trying to tell you how better to use it. Um, the only thing, you, just, you should read those and you should understand that. Um, the only thing that's slightly weird about the pop-ups is it says, oh, you hit your host key plus home and your host key plus whatever. And if you're not paying attention, um, you will miss the part where it says the host key is right control uh, on your keyboard by default. You can change that. So um, like to get the contextual menu where you can go into seamless mode, you can do right control and then home. And then you get a little pop-up that lets you configure some options about the virtual machine. One of those is what sort of mode you want the display to be in. Do you want the Windows machine to be in a window? Um, you know, just like this virtual box window, I would have all of Windows inside here and there would be a start button at the bottom. Um, or do you want it to be seamless mode like it is now? Uh, or, you know, what, what, what do you want it to be in terms of the graphics mode? And so like if I restart this here, you'll see it actually uh, toggle through a couple different modes. So this, this just went out of what Mac people would call coherence or uh, the virtual box term for it is seamless. And so I'm just going to do switch to scaled mode. And it's, it's like, oh, the, the host key is currently defined as right control. Yeah, so you could do right control and home and get sort of a different thing here. Now I've got the Direct3D drivers installed, um, and so I've got this sort of weird glitching happening uh, with the uh, <laughs> with the display. But if you're going to do that, you would reboot to safe mode, and you would go through the installer. Now in the installer, you have to pay attention because when you check the checkbox, you get a pop up, and it's like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And if you click yes. Uh, it doesn't actually install it. You have to say no because the question is phrased like, this is a really experimental thing and you would probably rather install the WDDM driver, right? And if you say yes, then that doesn't install the Direct3D driver. And if you say no, it does install the Direct3D driver. So, ha, ah. <laughs> yeah, thanks Oracle. That's great. Um, but it is experimental. So keep that in mind. Okay, and we're back. And see, now I'm not in seamless mode. I've just got this, you know, Windows machine running in a window, basically. But if I want to switch to seamless mode. All right. So I did uh, right control and L to enter seamless mode. And so I've gone from the windowed mode to seamless mode. And it's full Windows. It's not even emulated. It's just it's full Windows. It's ready to go. So that's how you do that. It's really, it's really not that big of a deal. And there you have it. Windows running safe and sound inside a virtual machine. It's sequestered to, to a virtual machine on Linux. Uh, this should work on pretty much every distribution under the sun. This even works on FreeNAS. So yeah, FreeNAS will let you run VirtualBox. And you get a nice, the, the, the GUI that we looked at, you get the web version of that. It works great. Um, you can RDP in, although I think that that requires a proprietary extension. Although I'm not sure if that's on FreeBSD by default or not. Probably not. Um, you can also pass through USB devices. So if you have a USB TV capture card or, you know, some other USB peripheral, you can configure VirtualBox to pass through that device to your virtual machine so that Windows will think, oh, hey, you've plugged in this piece of hardware directly to a USB port, even though it's a virtual machine. This works really well. Uh, there is one caveat. 
Um, and that's the whole Oracle commercial thing. If you're going to use USB 2.0, uh, it's part of something called the VirtualBox proprietary extensions um, that you have to install yourself. It's, it varies from distribution to distribution, but basically there's a plugin for VirtualBox that will enable USB 2.0 pass-through. Now, out of the box, it'll do USB 1.1 pass-through, but that's limited to 12 megabit, and really, that's not going to be good for any peripheral. But you can do USB 2.0 pass-through. That's supported in a virtual box, but you need those proprietary extensions from Oracle. Now, here's the catch. Uh, Oracle, if you use those in a commercial setting, Oracle wants you to pay for that. Um, you can download it and you can use it, but the license says you can only use it for personal and evaluation purposes. You can't use it for commercial purposes. So technically, if you use that for commercial purposes, you will owe Oracle money. And that's why a lot of people sort of frown on uh, Oracle shenanigans with this kind of thing. But that said, you're up and running. You've got Linux in <laughs> running as the host operating system, and you've got Windows running as a guest operating system. And it's running seamlessly, so you can mix and match apps all day long. And it's not going to be, you know, a lot of headache. It's not going to be a lot of work because you're running Windows. You're not doing emulation. You're not doing anything crazy. You're literally running Windows. So this is this is a pretty straightforward setup, and this is, you know, something that you do with your Linux box after you've, you know, spent a week or so getting uh, acclimated to, to Linux and, and your new Linux environment. So if you have any questions or you run into any problems, hit us up in the forums over at techsyndicate.com. This is Wendell signing out. Mm -hmm.